interesting in that lesson is that he said he will separate and when we throw it up in the air it's out of control it's out of our control mm -hmm. it's totally out of our control mm -hmm. and when we worship Yah worship, we should be lifting up holy hands empty hands mm -hmm. hallelujah just throwing it up and just let him handle it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he has a way of doing the right, doing it just right. So, last Shabbat, we talked about Gideon, right? Oh, yes, and we talked about Gideon, and and at the end of his, at his of his reign, he did one little thing, a little bit off. He asked for everybody to give him his, give him their little earrings, and they. He got 40, 40 pounds of gold, mm -hmm. turned it into a uh, ephod, and, the, and what do we do when we start seeing gold? <laughs> the <laughs> start tripping. And so we started whoring after the ephod, right? And so that was that was a bad thing. I was I was in a gathering in, the, in a church, and I heard. The pastor say, "Give me your gold. Give me your gold." Oh, wow. And I was like, mm, "That don't sound good." <laughs> and guess what? It wasn't good mm -hmm. because every time we ask people to give us gold so we can press it down and mount it and convert it into something, mm -hmm. even if it's if we think it's a good intent, it turns sour. We start whoring after it. And he wanted to make a ring and um, maybe a. a something, pretty much a breastplate, something for his chest. And if that was ever done, I know the gold was collected, but if that was ever done, it becomes something that we turn into an idol. So I want to talk about the leftover brothers because as time went on, after he after Gideon passed, there was an episode. And the episode caused all his sons to get killed, all but two. And he had 71. Mm. So man got 71 sons. <laughs> That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of boys. That's was that two football teams? <laughs> That's a lot of mouths to feed. That's right? That's ridiculous. <laughs> right, ridiculous. But if y'all bless you and you keep multiplying, he said be fruitful and multiply, right? Yeah, multiply. Yeah, yeah. So they were doing what he, he was doing. He was doing his job. He was doing like with you joy. can't condemn what God don't condemn. Look, with joy. No, this is just joy. Right? right? Yeah, with joy. Wives, right? Huh? He had some help. He had a couple of wives. Yeah, yeah, he has, he has some help. <laughs> and, and one, and one in particular wasn't even his wife. So we don't know how many wives he had, but one was a concubine who did not live with him. She had her own little spot. So that means the son, that son didn't grow up with, with his brothers. He was a half-breed, half-brother, whatever you want to call him. So he was outside the house. We talked about Joseph. 
and his brothers, and they were being blessed because they were in the house. Here was a brother that was outside the house. So some of the things that he saw his father do, he probably only saw it from a distance. Mm -hmm. So if you follow his track, follow what he did, you're going to see him mimicking dad from a distance. But you're not going to see him doing what dad did, the way dad did. Because mm -hmm. dad was a righteous man. When we first looked at Gideon, the first thing we find, about, find out about him, when Yah touches him and speaks to him, he starts tearing down the temple. He, he goes and tears down the temple at night because that was his orders, right? He started directing his people to Yah. And by the, by the end of his life, by the end of his life, they had, what, 40 years of peace? Because of what he did. He settled things. He made shalom in the nation. And when you find that there was a righteous person leading Israel, there was a time span afterwards of peace. When there was a wicked one, war. So Gideon, when he, when he died, there was peace. Let's read it. Let's go to... Judges, chapter 8, verse 33, I believe it is. Eight thirty-two. Someone, someone, anyone. Mm -hmm. Eight thirty-two. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good, good old age, and was buried in the sepulchre of Joash his father, in Ophrah of the Avi Ha Ezraim. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Yasharel turned again and went a whoring after Baalim and made Baal bury their Elohim. And the children, y'all. I know, God is like, yo, man, really? <laughs> oh, mercy. Really? And like, as soon as he died, yeah. it's like, as soon as he died, they were like, oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I've seen this. Them. I've seen this in when I was in Christianity. Pastor couldn't leave three, four weeks on vacation because all hell break loose. He'd be coming back like, I'm leaving you people. As soon as he, as soon as they got an opportunity, as soon, and if you see it, if you if you see, look at us. Watch a church, and I'll I'll say use this as an example. Watch a church and watch the pastor die. Yeah. And see what happens. Yeah. All hell break out. And, it's, and, the, and the people uh, were, were not patient enough to wait for him to come down. He up in the mountains. He only up 40 days. Came back down and they had a horsey going on. <laughs> they were like, it's time to party now. It was like, really? You know, made a fake, fake cow and start worshiping this bell. Right? Immediately. Read that again. 34? Is it 33 or 33? 33. And it came to pass came to as soon pass. as Gideon was dead. As soon as this man is dead, his body's still cold, still and warm. Dead. The children of Yasharel turned again and went a whoring after Baalim. Uh, and made Baal Beryeth their Elohim. Seriously? I mean, just, I don't know. Go ahead. And just. the children of Yasharel remembered not Yahuwah Eloheikim who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Yerubbabel, namely Gidon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Yasharal. Okay, so Elder Yekezkel would love for you guys that if I die, 
and you still around and we've been together for a minute, that you at least consider mm -hmm. my family mm -hmm. and not say, mm -hmm. we going, we going on, mm -hmm. we moving on. Because mm -hmm. we should be looking out for each other, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even when we're not here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody needs to be um, stepping looking to the out. plate. Yeah. Or do we want to fall into the same trap? Mm -hmm. So let's let's so let's read a little bit of this because some let's see what happens. Um hold your point and someone go to Jer Jeremiah 17 and 9. We didn't do our psalms today. Okay. Give me Yahoo 17? Yes. Verse 9 to what? Just the one verse. <clears throat> the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The heart is desperately wicked. Someone wants to tell you that, you know, we all good. We all got good hearts. We'll look at somebody. We'll go. I said the days and day that a lot of people go to funerals, right? They'll go to you go to a funeral and they'll be like, he was such a good person. Yeah, wicked as he could be, right? They'll 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 put him in heaven, right? How great that person was, right? But in reality, his heart was wicked. And you guess what? Most of us fall into that. Most of us have. Hopefully you're not there now, but most of us at one time or another, we had a wicked heart. Right. It's only the Ruha that can make a difference. It can make a change. Mm -hmm. But but if I examine a kid through five years old, four years old, they have a deaf they have a wicked heart. You want to say the innocent. <laughs> Take their toy from them and see what happens. Yeah. Take the candy from him. Like it's that. Good. You start real seeing. I was like, where did that come from? Let that grow into a man. Wow. With no boundaries. Right. And watch what happens. I'm gonna go to one re, go to um, Luke six and forty-five. Just want to look at a heart, a couple of things about what the book says about heart. Luke 6 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. So you hear somebody that's always screaming and yelling and cussing the people out? Hmm. Out of his heart. Out of the abundance of his heart, the mouth speaks. So now let's give me one Proverbs. One for all. Proverbs 18 and 12. Looking at a man's heart, because this one person that we're getting ready to walk into in chapter 9 had a wicked heart. Proverbs 18. 18, 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Okay, just want to throw proverbs out there for you, because we're haughty. We're he, our spirit is way up here sometimes when it shouldn't be where it is. Shalom. 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 Sorry, you can't stay longer. Oh, uh, okay. So. Now let's go back to Judges. And I want you to see something before we get to the curse. Because the curse is coming. Alright? So let's read. Judges, Chap I think, what? Uh, Judges 9, verse 1. <clears throat> and Abimelech, the son of Yerubbaal, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren, and communed with them, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying... Now, we know who Abimelech is? 
Abimelech is the son of Gideon by his concubine. So he lived outside of the house with the concubine, right? This was the evil one, right? That's what killed evil all his one? brothers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here he is on the outside, but he sees what's going on in the inside from a distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I lived outside of the house of my mother, with, and she raised her children. And I could, I would come in, and I would see from a distance what was going on. And from a distance, it looked like it was a beautiful thing because they had a beautiful house. They're riding mini bikes. They're playing um, Atari. Atari. What is it? Atari. Atari. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. That was before. That's old school, right? Yeah. You know that little Atari game with the thing bouncing back and forth? Mm -hmm. They had that. Okay, so you don't think that's exciting? Mm -hmm. If you have it today, it's worth thousands of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. That little Atari game, because now they don't make them anymore. And if you can find one in your attic, go treasure hunting. Put it on um, eBay. Ebay, you can you can make thousands of dollars. A lot of us got thousands of dollars sitting, in the attic. <laughs> sitting up in the attic. Don't even know it. I, I want my finding since I, I I gave you that. All right. So Abimelech goes and watch watch this. You're going to see this plan that he has in his head, right? He went to his uncles, yo. All his uncles and the other leaders of the of, of his dad's tent, of his mom's house, and let's see what he does, because his dad died, right? So he should be in mourning, right? Let's see what he does. Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether is better for you, either that all of the sons of Yerubael which are three score and ten persons, reign over you. Okay, and Yahubael is Gideon. Is Gideon. Okay. <clears throat> which are three score and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. Okay, so now let me ask you this. What's better that you have 70 people as your chief or leaders? Or just one. It would be better if it's just me, right? <laughs> you say it depends? Depends on who that one is. Now, what's not mentioned here is this guy don't talk to God or Yah. That's not even even in his imagination. He's, he's like, I'm going to figure this thing out. But right now he's got a plan. Jeremiah 17, the heart of this man is desperately wicked. And as it as he manifests itself, watch how it gets, it gets like, I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. It's like a like a, a like a snowball rolling down the hill. By the time it hits the bottom, you're like, get out of the way because this man lost it. Mm -hmm. How do you get there from a godly father of he, he, wait, wait, wait till you see what happens. I'm like, whoa, man. All right, let's go, let's go. All right, verse three. And his verse mother, three. And his mother's brethren spoke of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words. And their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, he is our brother. Okay, so he went on a campaign, got all his uncles to vote for him, right? They voted A. For Abimelech. <laughs> they voted for him like after all, he is he's our blood. Right? So what harm can happen if he's our if, if he's in charge? Alright, so let's see what he does. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Barith, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. Okay, so they paid him, gave him a little bit of money. 
and he hired vain. The word vain is the word, the Hebrew word rake. Okay? Strong's 7386. It means empty. Vain means, it's the same word used when Joseph was thrown in the pit. He said it was empty. So as a matter of fact, it said it wasn't even any water in it. It was just an empty, vain, Cold. Useless, useless piece of land. So he had mercenaries. Yes, mercenaries. But you're going to find these people were ruthless. <coughs> They don't, they don't care. They, they're out of control. Mm -hmm. Anybody been around anybody out of control? Mm -hmm. I've been around. I, I was with a group of people. They're all out of control. Right? And guess what? I was leading the pack. <laughs> <laughs> I was out of control Dad. too. We were all out of control. And Praise y'all for my ish, my wife, because that stopped me from being out of control. When she would come, I would say, oh, you guys got to get up out of here. Because you're useless. And you're so out of control. If I go to the bathroom, you'll be hitting on my wife. To my wife to be. I knew it. I knew, I knew that this is how out of control these guys were. And I was the same. I was out of control as well with, as well with them. Okay, so he hires 10. It's going to tell you later on. But he hires 10 guys. These are useless. You know, you want to think that there are people that there's, uh, grace is going to find them. They can get saved. Now, there's some people who destined, yeah. their destination yeah. is destruction. Mm -hmm. True. And they know it, too. They know it. And guess what? You know it too. But you don't want to get rid of all your friends. Me and homie been together for... <laughs> if that boy get a chance to have sex with your daughter, he will. Because he out of control. Wow. Don't think when you walk out of the room and she gets up, yeah, your little daughter, that he ain't looking like, oh, look at that. And scheming. Because they out of control. Well, this is that... This is the group that he decides to hire. Wow. All right. We're going to get through 52 verses. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> My version calls them good for nothing thugs. Good. Yeah. I like that. Good for nothing thugs. Wow. Right? Which version is that? Bonnie. CJ Beyond. Okay. <laughs> so, so they were, you know, they were living the life. Living the thug life. Mm. And guess what? A lot of us like that. We like the thug life. We like something glamorous about that. Something glamorous about seeing somebody living thuggish. You don't think so? Ask some of the women because I saw some of the women like tripping over thuggish. Go, he cool. We got the hat on the side, whatever. And I'm like, I was the nerd, so I wasn't getting all all that. <laughs> <laughs> all right so he went to his mother's brothers okay um all right verse five and he went to his father's house at, at oprah and slew his brethren the sons of Yerubael, being three score and ten persons upon one stone notwithstanding yet yotham the youngest son of Yerubael, was left okay before he hid himself. Before he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together and all the house of Milo and went and made Avimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. All right, before you go any further, he took his thuggish friends that he just hired and they killed all 70. There's no competition when you kill your competition. Right? right? He killed all of them. Now, except for one. One, one hit. Yep, one hit. In the closet, under the bed. He got away. 
Do you think that anyone else was killed? Yeah. 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 Like the kids, yeah. The wives, the wives. And other people they didn't like just because. The whole family. They were ruthless. They were out of control. Wow. He's only telling us of the 70 that died. When we went in and got Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. do you think he was the only person we killed? No. Yeah. Nope. Do you think there were any women there that were killed? Mm -hmm. Do you think any children were there that were killed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And America applauded. Wow. Shame on America. Mm -hmm. Shame on us. Because he had weapons of mass destruction. Right. So and we so find out that that was the biggest lie. We set him up. And then we killed him. And then put broadcast on the news. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, all right, we got him, we got him. Dancing in the streets pretty much. But you sent in the Navy SEALs and kill everything that was around them. Children, wives, and buried them in the sea. That's how we, we just fall right in line. This man sent his 10 people in with him. He went along with them. I told you, watch, this isn't the worst. This is pretty bad. He killed 10 of his brothers. I mean, 70 of his brothers. 69. All right. <laughs> 69 brothers. And, it, and what's the next thing that they do? They raise him up as king. Be careful, America. Be careful, Israel. Because we fall into the same trap. We fall into the same trap. We hire our thugs and we send them out. I'm going to be careful because there's some things I want to say that's in my mind that I'm not going to let it out. But we have done atrocities over atrocities and we just act like it doesn't exist. We'll go offline and talk about that. Because we know it. All right. So the next thing you do, they raise them up as king. <clears throat> Come on, where are we at? Verse 7. Verse 7. We got 40 something chat verses to go. <laughs> Verse 7. Not going anywhere forward. But... <laughs> All right. And when they told it to Yotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount G Gerizim and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mount Gerizim. Gerizim? Say it. Gerizim. Gerizim. Okay. That was Garazim. Yep, Garazim. Yeah. Garazim. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy chapter eleven, verse twenty-nine. You can write it down. That land where he stood, that mountain that he stood on, mm -hmm. was a blessed land, a blessed area. It was blessed by Yah. Mm -hmm. He put he picked a particular spot mm -hmm. to do this what he's about to do mm -hmm. right so he's on this spot he's the only son left besides his brother right mm -hmm. and he gets up and he pronounces this what he's getting ready to pronounce some people call it a parable some people call it what it is a curse so he programmed that he here's here's two men he voices out a curse. See, you think cursing is that no good son of a... No, no, no. This is a true curse. Watch it. Because just yelling at somebody is not a curse. It's offensive. You may hurt their feelings. But watch this curse. Because this curse is, is so... Profound. Listen to it. Listen to the curse. Because it starts out like a riddle. But listen to what? Listen to how it unfolds. Come on. All right. And he lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that Elohim may hearken unto you. 
The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, wherewith by me they honor Elohim and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Come and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine, which cheers Elohim and man, and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If, if in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you have done truly and sincerely in that you have made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt well with Yerubael and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, mm -hmm. my father fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. Okay. And, oh, sorry, hold on, hold on. Hold that point. Sorry. All right. So, you hear this curse, listen to it. Now, trust me, if you can go to um, Bible Hub or uh, find an interlinear linear Bible and read it, you're going to, and just, you can take out the words that aren't there. It's poetic. Mm. It's a poem. It's really because some things are added on so that you can understand it. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see that it's a, like, Chanel really likes writing poetry. You know, you see the poem as it unfolds, right? It's really, the English language kind of taints it. It doesn't sound as poetic, right? But it starts at the top and it works its way down. All the way down to the to the very the lowest state, mm -hmm. mm. and it's really it gives you an idea of what his brother thought of him. Like of uh, all the brothers, they they probably wanted one of us to rule, but you guys picked the lowest mm -hmm. to rule over you. The problem with us is in we do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Do you vote Democrat or Republican? Mm -hmm. Do you re vote in independent? Do you vote because you want somebody to rule over you? Yeah. You're not satisfied with what y'all can do for you. You don't believe in y'all. You believe in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. You believe in the Republican Party. You believe in man, and you put man over top of Yah. And know, know what? When you do that, you're going to find yourself in the same barrel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Voting for, and, you, and guess what? You find yourself end up having the lowest of the lowest ruling over you. Mm -hmm. The orange guy. Mm -hmm. He just sits right up and tells you, yeah, I grab him by it. Yeah. It's like, really? That's who you want? And everybody's like, look at his Yeah. But if you didn't have him, you would have her. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll pick, the, pick the best of pick two. Of right. <laughs> Which, which what do you want? Do you want the tree, the branch, the the um, you name it. But we have a tendency of we can't do right unless we have man telling us what to do. To the they're like all together. Yeah, we need somebody to rule over us. And y'all saying, what about me? And you're saying, what did he say before he died? He said, I'm not going to rule over you, and neither should my sons rule over you. That's what Gideon said. Mm -hmm. 
But no, they wanted the king. Saul's not the only one. They wanted the king. So let's go. Where are we at? 17. Oh, you made it to 17 already? Let's go back to 16. Okay. <laughs> now, therefore, if you have tr done truly and sincerely. Sincerely. In that sincerely. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Because sincerely was Hebrews, uh, was the Strong's word, 8, 5, 49. Complete, sound, blamelessly. Did you do this? That everybody knows exactly what you were doing? In politicians, politics, mm -hmm. nobody does this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody has dirt on their hands. Right? Nobody's clean. Everybody, that's why they look it up. They, they're like, give, you, you say you're running for such and such, give them a few minutes. When they get done, they're going to find some dirt on you. And they're going to put it out in public. And you're going to look like mud on your face, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're Obama. Obama lived a life pretty much. He kept his nose clean. That's why he made it to the top. Right. No, all quiet. his dirt he did behind, uh, he did in the government. Yeah, he did it once he got he it on. He did all he did. <laughs> all his dirt he did, we don't know about. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. so, so that word sincerely is Tamim. That is Strong's 8. 549 and the word the word is really complete sound blamelessly mm -hmm. all right Rhea. uh 16 okay in that you have made abimelech king and if you have dealt well with yerubael and his house and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands for my father fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of midian and you are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, three score and ten persons, upon one stone. And have made Abimelech, the son of his maidservant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Yerubael and his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. I'm good. I'm good. If that's what you did, you did it right? Okay. Now, this brother, Saul, his brother's killed. Probably saw his mother die. Saw all the family members, everyone that was around him, wiped out. Right? He stands up on the mountain. And I love this curse because this is the last time you're going to hear from him. Come on. First oh, one. I have 19 and 20 underlined and read it because it was so, it was such a thing for me. That was deep. Yeah. Uh, Go back to 19 again. Now, if you dealt truly and sincerely with Yerubael and his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo. And let fire come from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. Wow. Now, mm -hmm. he pronounces a curse on them. And what's cool about it is that when you watch his next steps, he pretty much backs away. Pretty much backs away and says, you know what? The, um, I'm going to let y'all handle this. There's an issue that I'm, I'm seeing this with us, that we have a whole lot to say. Me. I'm going to talk about me. I have a whole lot to say and don't know how to shut up. Hmm. So I say it again next the next week. And then I'll pray about it and then I'll say it again. Okay, this man spoke on this matter. For, um put it out there, and stepped away and said, go ahead, y'all, get them. All right, because the, pronounce the fire to come down. Come on. 21. Mm -hmm. And Yotham ran away and fled and went to Be'er and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, his brother. And that was the last, I'm looking for him. I'm like, did he come back? He's gone. He, lit, he did his, he did the curse. 
He pronounced the curse mm -hmm. on a holy land, a holy spot, and he walked away, ran away, fled. Okay, so now it's no longer in my hands. It's all in Yah's hands. Let's see what Yah does. When Avimelech had reigned three years over Yasharel. All right. That makes you just drop the bike. You killed 70 people, and Yah just says, go ahead, reign. See, the, 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 the delusion that we have sometimes is we see prosperity mm -hmm. and thinking everything cool. Mm -hmm. You spent three years reigning now. And ain't nobody saying nothing now. I'm the bad. I'm the. I'm up here. Yeah. I'm living large. Yeah. You killed all your brothers. You heard this curse. You probably thought that nut. He's out of here. Mm -hmm. And you probably thought everything was cool. Mm -hmm. Three years of peace. Mm -hmm. We just read that all his people were serving Baal. You don't have any problem now. Everything's good. Y'all backed up. And just because penalty is not immediately ushered does not mean that penalty is not coming. Right. Just because we've been here for 400 years and we've seen all kinds of stuff happening and we haven't seen the, um, the results of this yet, don't think it ain't coming. You like that? Don't think it ain't coming. It's coming. It's coming. Oh yeah, it's coming. All right, three, three days. Four hundred days. What's that mean to, to y'all? Not a <laughs> If you are guilty, y'all say you're going to pay. All right, so let's go. Let's go. This is good. This is. Oh, man, I love this. Go ahead. Okay, good. All right. So when Avimelech had reigned three years over Yasharel, then Elohim sent an evil ruach between Avimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Avimelech. So there you go. The, the holy ruach. He sent a, a evil ruach. See, some people don't get this. Here's the fire. You ever get angry with somebody? You don't know why you're angry at them? I just don't like the way you look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, somebody just walks into your your into your area and you're like, nah, I can't stand him. What did he say to you? What did he do? I don't know. I just don't like him. Something just rubs my spirit wrong. I've, I've experienced that. I've, said, I've, I've, I've had people that I had to deal with and I really just did not like them. I had people that just didn't like me. I don't like the way he looked. I don't like the way he walked. I don't like the way he talked. I just can't stand him. Can you imagine y'all say a whole group over here? Woo. It's like, oh, there's that fire. And when you when you run into those, that person. Don't you get a little warm inside? <laughs> yeah, you feel a little burning inside, don't you? Feel a little fire burning up? It's kindling just a little bit? I get it right in my chest. You're right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you give me heartburn. You, we say that, right? <laughs> right? You get a little warm. I'm getting, it's getting a little warm in here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You actually leave buildings at times. Leave places because like, I, don't, I can't stand those people. You say that about a whole group of people. Every time I'm around those people, I can't stand them. You want to go to such and such? No, 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 because such and such is going to be there. All right, so let's see. Because this spirit was placed on the people, and the people started doing some stuff that was... Here you go. Let's see it. All right, verse 24. That the cruelty done to the three score and ten sons of Yerubbaal might come. There and their you. blood be laid upon Abimelech, their brother, who mm. slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brother. Okay, so there's the explanation why the Ruach, the, why Yah gave the evil Ruach. Because this is going to be the beginning 
of the payment. All right. And the men of Shechem sent liars in wait for him in the top of the mountains, and they robbed all that came along that way by them, and it was told of Imelech. And the word liars is, a, is, is the word... Um, anybody seen a cowboy movie? And they come running, riding around, mm-hmm. and there's like up on the hill, these guys are sitting there just waiting for them to come around. Mm-hmm. And then they come down and they either like rob the stagecoach. Mm-hmm. They're the liars. Okay. They just lying in wait, oh. just mm-hmm. waiting for you. So every time you came, every time these people would come through, they just they they set up a trap for them. All right. Okay. And. Gael, the son of Eved, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem. And the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went out into the fields and gathered their vineyards and trode the grapes and made merry and went into the house of their Elohim and did eat and drink. Who's Elohim? Their. Their, their Elohim. Lower Casey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And did eat and drink and cursed Avimelech. Just want you to know that when they say Elohim, they're not talking about our Elohim. Mm-hmm. They're Elohim. They have their own little El- They got their own little gods. They're little Elohims. And then they went and they ate and drank. And they and they go now they're talking about Yah's people. Right? Mm-hmm. Even though there's an evil one in charge of Imelech. Go ahead. And Gaal, the son of Eved, said, Who is Avimelech and who is Shechem that we should serve him? Is not he the son of Yerubael and Zebul, his, his officer? Serve the men of Kamor, the father of Shechem. For why should we serve him? And would to Elohim this people were under my hand. Then would I remove Abimelech. And he said unto Abimelech, Increase your army and come out. And when Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gaal, the son of Eved, his anger was kindled. Now, if you go back to 29, when he says... The Elohim, now he's talking about ours. Mm-hmm. He, done, when he done stepped it up. He's like, I'm not talking about your God, our God. I'm talking about your God. I wish to God they would let me have them. Mm-hmm. All right, so y'all's, he's paying, y'all's paying close attention to what's happening. Matter of fact, he's helping them set it up. 30. Mm-hmm. And when Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gaal, the son of Eved, his anger was kindled. And he sent messengers unto Avimelech privately, <laughs> saying, Behold, Gaal, the son of Eved, and his brethren have come to Shechem, and behold, they fortify the city against you. So he spied. He sent a spy out. He already, um, he's up in, the, in this guy's face, and he sends a spy back to Avimelech, tell him, yo, you know what's going on? He's talking about you. This is what you need to do. Go. Now therefore, up by night, you and the people that is with you, and lie and wait in the field. And it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun of up, the sun is up, you shall rise early and set upon the city. And behold, when he and the people that is with him come out against him, then may ye do to him, may you do to them as you shall find occasion. And Avimelech rose up, and all the people that were with him by night, and they laid wait against Shechem in four companies. And Gaal the son of Eved went out and stood in the in, into, in the entering of the gate of the city. And Avimelech rose up, and the people that were with him from lying in wait. And when Gaal saw the people, he said to Zebul, Behold, there come people down from the top of the mountains. And Zebul said unto him. You see the shadow of the mountains as if they were men. And Gaal spoke again and said, See, there come people down by the middle of the land, and another company come along by the plain of Maonian. Then said Zebul unto him, Where is now your mouth? Where no, is see, he? he is holding that, holding back, waiting, waiting it, faking it, <laughs> acting like nothing's really. What are you looking at? Shadows, right? Mm-hmm. Holding it. Because he didn't want to get, he didn't want to, the jig is up. He didn't want the jig to be up prematurely. Then when they were getting ready to come pounce on him, then he's like, "Now you so big and bad. Let's see what you do now." <laughs> go ahead. Let's re- go read that. 
right, verse uh, 37. 37. And Gaal spoke again, and see, now there come people down by the middle of the land, and another company come along by the plain of Maonim. Then said Zebul to him, Where your mouth now? Where is, it? Where is now <laughs> your mouth? Like that. You had all that mouth. You had yeah, all that you've been mouth. talking a lot of trash now. Now, right, now what right, you going right, to do? Right, right, right. <laughs> Wherewith you said, Who is the villain like that we should that serve him? Just, is not this the people that you have despised? That's so, right. I, I pray now, fight with them. And God went out before the men of Shechem and fought with Avimelech. And Avimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many were overthrown and wounded, even unto the entering of the gate. He kicked their agates. <laughs> <laughs> and Avimelech dwelt at Aramah, and Zavul thrust unto Gaal and said to his brethren that they should not dwell in Shechem. And it came to pass on the morrow that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech. And he took the people and divided them into three companies, and laid wait in the field, and looked. And behold, the people were come forth out of the city, and he rose up against them and smote them. Now he divided his people into three parties. Oh, cool. Remember his dad? Mm -hmm. He saw his dad's action from a distance. And his dad was like, he only had 300 men. But he took his little 300 men and divided them in thirds. Mm. Right? Mm. So Abimelech's like, yeah, I remember Dad did that. Mm. I'm going to do the same thing. He divided his people in thirds. But he had a whole lot more. Mm. Right? But he followed some of the patterns of Daddy. Because he saw his dad from a distance. But he, mm -hmm. in nowhere in the script did he say anything about Yah. He didn't say anything to Elohim. He didn't think that he needed to pray. He didn't think that he needed to even talk to a prophet. Mm -hmm. There were some people that would call a prophet even if they called a false prophet. <laughs> he was he was, he was like, I'm not even calling anybody. I got wow. this. A haughty spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay, and Abimelech... Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are we at? First. Verse 44. 44. Okay. And Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. And the two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them. Mm -hmm. And Avimelech fought against the city all that day. And he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city and sowed it with salt. Okay, so he sowed it with salt. Does anybody know what that means? Mm. Now, mm -hmm. um, but salt mm, keeps out, uh, I guess, weird. It's preserved. Well, yeah, salt is a preservative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Salt because um, those animals that come out and eat it. Huh? Salt because those animals that come out and eat it. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Well, oh. deer come out and See, eat I was salt. thinking it was like a witchcraft thing. So, I Google it. Prevent I'm like, uh, okay. What's going on with this salt? The sowing of salt was a ritual of spreading salt on a conquered city that symbolized a curse on their inhabitable land. Mm. So they would take salt and literally cover the whole land. So that they could grow. And the land, when the salt would seep down into the soil, it would grow nothing. Mm. Isn't that crazy? It's not like you would take the people and you would turn and turn them into slaves. He didn't even do that. He killed them. So they didn't even take in prisoners and then he just takes all their land and says you know what it's going to be cursed because I'm going to curse it I'm going to cover it and guess who else did this our pope the popes in the catholic church <coughs> I'm looking at this I'm like what? really <laughs> the early popes when they would conquer land they would do the same thing mm -hmm. they would conquer the land and then they would desecrate it and turn it and and bring in salt and just cover it over the land wow so that no one can you if you by chance survive you can't even grow a tomato plant wow. you can't survive there it's kill you afterwards wow. is that crazy it's crazy that we that our mindset is wicked I told you this man was wicked. It just got worse and worse. We fought and killed all day long. 
And then when we got done killing everybody, we didn't even bring in slaves. And then we're going to hire everybody to go out and just cover the land with salt. Wow. It says it right there. He salted the land. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is deep. How wicked this is. <coughs> well, it's kind of deeper than that even because it's not their land. It's y'all's land. It's y'all's land. And like you said, if he had been going to y'all saying, y'all would have been like, are you crazy? Yeah. It's land. It's, I don't know what you're talking about. I'll let them use it. They have use of it. That's not their land. Right, even if he yeah, says take right. the land from them. Right. He never said destroy the land. Right to that. mm -hmm. That's some hatred right there. Mm -hmm. But that's what people He's do. out of control. Rulers today are doing too. Yeah, do we still do it. Mm -hmm. do they're, they're selling us land that's not theirs to sell, so that's a whole other, mm. that's a whole other and then we did, And then when the land is destroyed, we tell you, they tell you go live on it. Right, yeah. Right. We'll sell it to you cheap. I ain't giving it to you, but we'll sell it to you real cheap. <laughs> and, and, and the land is, all, is giving you, the land is polluted. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. When I first found out that what we do when we take over our land is we send in the military, send in missiles and bombs right. and destroy their seed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They destroy the seed houses and Thank you. Um, I didn't say houses, but that's what we're talking about. No, you're right. Wherever they house their seeds, mm -hmm. destroy the seeds. Mm -hmm. We did that in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Destroy the seeds. Then we'll come back and destroy the people. Mm -hmm. they in a few so they're pretty much doing the same thing. This is this was them destroying the seed. They're destroying the land. So if you got seed and you can't put it on the land, what good is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can't survive. Didn't they do that in Ethiopia in the 70s too? I don't know. I don't when they were trying to drive out a... Uh... Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll have to look that up. Mm -hmm. All right, so he saw the land. He sowed the land with salt. Man. 46. And when all the men of the Tower of Shechem heard that, they entered into a hold of the house of the El Bari. And it was told of Vimelech that all the men of the Tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to Mount Salmon, he and all the people that were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bow from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulder and said unto the people that were with him, What ye have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. Okay. Like father, like son. Mm -hmm. Last week, he told his son. He told he told his men, take the horn in one hand and the uh, jar with the um, candle in the other hand. Break the jar, and then you have a lamp and you have the horn. He said, "This is what I do. Whatever you see me do, you do." This was Gideon, and so Gideon did this, right? So the the son is mimicking the dad. He's like, watch what I do. And whatever I do, you do. Right? So I go do something stupid. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I want you to go do something stupid. <laughs> right? So pretty they, they pretty much, he's following his dad's clue from a distance. And because he's outside of the house, he's not following what exactly what dad did. He didn't do it according to that. Dad did what, this, what the Ruhop had gave to him to do through prayer <clears throat> this guy's like just coming up with stuff mm -hmm. and he's wicked mm -hmm. and because he's wicked it's twisted and because it's twisted it's going to come to a calamity mm -hmm. come on and <clears throat> oh 49 you do, yep thank you sir and all the people likewise cut down every man his bow and follow Abimelech and put them to the hold, and set the hold on fire upon them, so that all the men of the Tower of Shechem died also, about a thousand men and women. Now, see, mm -hmm. in one hand, it looks like he's very successful. Mm -hmm. He's killing people. He's ruling, taking over stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, the scripture says, test the spirit by the spirit. It went behind me. Try the spirit because 
some things look successful. You can ride through the United States and see some big mega churches. And you think, now that's a successful building. Mm -hmm. They're doing, they must be prospering. Right. God must be blessing them. Y'all mm -hmm. blessing that? No. 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 Okay. Then went Abimelech to Tibetz and encamped against Tibetz and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and there fled all the men and women, and all they of the city, and shut it to them, and got them up to the top of the tower. <laughs> and Abimelech came unto the tower and fought against it, and went hard unto the door of the tower to burn it with, with fire. Wait a minute. If you're ruling, and you got all these people, right? Send somebody up there to do the work. He's so haughty. He's so high-minded. He thinks, I'm going to burn this thing down. He, out of, he is totally out of control. You don't think he's out of control? Listen to him. Come on. And a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Avimelech's head mm -hmm. and all to break his skull. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cracked his head open like a coconut. <laughs> then he called hastily unto the young man his armor bearer and said to him, Draw your sword and slay me, that men say not of me a woman slew him. All right, now. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you're thinking about? That's, that's, that's what, what you're that's thinking, that's about? What thinking about? Like, that truly please don't let it be said that I was killed by a woman. Don't let that be my legacy, please. Oh, no. You killed me. Yeah. All right, all right. So hold your point. We're almost done, right? Second Samuel, chapter 11. So that you don't want that to be your legacy, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's your biggest concern. Not that I conquered everything or that I led, but... Don't let it be that my that a woman slayed me, cracked my head open. I'll be like a laughing stock. Now you'll be dead. So, what verse? Start at one. Okay. Let's read down to um, twenty-one verses. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Speak up. Come over here. Come over here. Come stand, stand next to me. It was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Yoab and his servants with him and all Yasharal. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and the <laughs> But David came still at Yerushalayim. And it came to pass in an evening, evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, It is not Bathsheba, the daughter of Elian, the woman of Uriah. Ura mm -hmm. And the chief. can't hear you, baby. You got to read. You got to read to everybody. And David sent messengers and, and took her. And she came in the, unto him. And he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. And David sent to Yoab, saying, 
to your Yahu, go down to your house and wash your feet. And your Yahu departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But your Yahu slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. Okay. So, the story is about David and, and, and Delilah, Bathsheba, right? And you saw what happens, right? So, the baby, so we're not going into this, but I just want you to feel, feel the story, right? So, Chanel, pick it up. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down into his house, David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey, when thou didst thou not go down into thy house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in open fields. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink, and to lie with my wife, as thou livest, and as thou so livest? I will not do this thing. And David said unto Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and tomorrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servant of his Lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it to the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. So we're going to finish this. There's a point to this. I didn't just bring out, like, let's just talk about David and... Um, Bathsheba, right? There's a reason that we're we're going in here, right? It's all going to come to to a head in a minute. But I just had to ask the question, like, how long did that take from the time that he gave that, that David and Bathsheba were together? It almost sounded like I always thought that that was almost like it, like an instant, a week or so, right? Yeah. But it takes longer than that to find out you're without child. Yeah, I mean, that you have a child. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so it had to take a month or so. Yeah. Right? So it was some time went through here. Anyway. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Longer than that, because it really depends how long were they, were they yeah. Okay, so she was just, she was just purifying herself. So, so that's letting us know that she had just came off of her cycle. Then she had sex. When it was time for the next time to come, at least 30 days later, she's like, ain't nothing happening. So at least 30 days, and she was like, David, I think I got a, we got a problem. All right, so come on. 17. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war, and charged a messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approach ye so nigh unto the city when ye did fight? Know ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Who smote Amalek, mm. Abelak? 
the son of Jerusalem. Yes, and that be Gideon. All right. Did not a woman cast a piece of milestone upon him from the wall that he died in <laughs> Thebes? <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're talking. This is having the conversation, right? It's like, well, we got to be careful because you remember Gideon's son, right? The, the, the thing that he didn't want to happen, exactly. happened. Everybody knew about it. They talk about it like every day. Like, yo, remember that guy? Gideon's his son? Remember what happened to him? He was up against the wall, and the, and the woman smashed his head? That was just like, that was, we know who won the Ali Frazier fight. I mean, everybody knew. Right? It was, it was, common. The very th same thing that he was trying to avoid happened. So everybody talk about him. They talk about him like he was a fool. He, he got underneath the tree, underneath the wall, and they crashed his head. That's why we talk, that's why they're, like, out of everything they should be talking about, why, he, why his name pop up? Mm -hmm. King sleeping with somebody else. And they're like, uh, what's happening in the war? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, we had to stay away from the wall because remember what happened to Gideon? <laughs> 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 All right, so let's go back to verse, let's go back to chapter 9. I just wanted to bring that up because that's common, that's common lingo. Mm -hmm. He done made a fool of himself because he was so haughty and so high-minded that he thought that the last thing I want everybody to do is to remember me like this. People still talking about him. All right, where are we at? Um, 55. 55. Mm -hmm. And when the men of Yasharel saw that Abimelech was dead. Go they, back to 54. We don't right. read 54 again. All right. Then he called hastily unto the young man his armor bearer and said unto him, Draw your sword and slay me, that men not say of me a woman slew me. And his young man thrust him through, and he died. That was the end of him. Mm -hmm. Come on. And when the men of Yasharel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. Thus Elohim rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father, in slaying his seventy brethren. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did Elohim render upon their heads. And upon them came the curse of Yotham, the son of Yerubalah. Hallelujah. So how, how did you like that? Mm. Yah works. We've heard this. Yah works in mysterious ways. Yah works in ways sometimes we don't even get it. He didn't need to split, spread open the Red Sea. He didn't have to do anything. All he did was put an evil spirit on a group of people. And when it was all said and done, he was cleansing an act that had taken place that was pronounced as a curse. And he says it right there at the end. He says, this was for that curse. Here you go. You put the curse out. We think somebody yelling at us and curse, cursing at us, calling us an in, calling us a MF, calling us, we think that's bad. When Yah sends fire, my last point, when Yah sends fire, it don't, don't necessarily have to be fire. Mm -hmm. you, think, you think that it has to be fire. You think that it has to be, um, he has to send fire from the sky. More than one way to skin a cat. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yah has a way of making things right. And when you see the fire come, you don't recognize it until it's too late. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about the other Abimelech. Because there was another Abimelech. Abimelech is a common name. Mm -hmm. And it's a name for, for Hebrews and it's also a name for the Fal Palestine, mm -hmm. Palestinians. Um, Abimelech, the word, the name Abimelech means son of a king. Mm -hmm. And so he gave him an honorable name, but the man was not honorable. Mm -hmm. 
And he could say, well, I wasn't with my dad. That's just an excuse. The wickedness of Abimelech was shown and he lived in a time where he had a godly father that was a, a righteous father. Abraham and Sarah sojourned and they came to a land and the king Abimelech was there. And this king was a righteous man. And this king, when he saw Sarah, he's like, oh, mm, Sarah, you looking good. Abraham and, said, that's my sister. Yes. And he's, but Yahuwah spoke to him in the dream. In the dream. To the king. To the king. Because he was not wicked. And, and what did, the, what did, uh, what did Yahuwah say to him? That's not his sister. Right. That's his wife. And what and did... what? He had, a, he had a conversation with him. Yes, he did. And he tells, and Abimelech tells Yahuwah, I had a pure heart. Yeah. I didn't do this evilly. I did it out of a, what we read earlier? Out of, um, what was it, Luke 6, mm -hmm. right? Out of a good heart? He said, I tried to do this out of a good, with good intent. She yeah. said he was his sister. Right. He said, yeah, well, if you, if you touch her, yeah, all hell gonna break out. More fire. You got problems. Because and and just to break, just to close it up. And because of Sarah, none of the women gave birth in Abimelech's land. He closed all their wounds. Wow. Because of Sarah, right? And and when he gave Sarah back, he was came back to Abraham. He's like, yo. Y'all spoke to me last night. He said, I thought that was your sister. He, and he, he said, well, she is. We got the same, we're half brothers and sisters. And whenever, and I told her, like, whenever we go out, we run into places, you know how beautiful you are. We would just say you're my sister, so to play it safe. So he don't get killed. So I don't get killed. Mm -hmm. Right? And so here's two of Bimelech's. One had a pure heart. And he was trying to do something, but he wasn't trying to do wrong. And y'all touched, y'all changed that scenario. The other one was just wicked. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to bring those two up because we don't have time to go and read that. But I wanted to bring that up because I want to ask you, which Abimelech are you? Mm -hmm. Y'all will take the filthy, dirty, and disgusting um, heart and purify it. He wash it and cleanse it. But you have to be yielding to him. You have to have a sensitive ear to Yah. And that one of them like listen to Yah. The other one had no nothing to do with him. And that's why he was killed by a woman. <laughs> <laughs> don't, let like, don't let that be said that I was killed by a woman. Crack this head wide open. You know what? You know it's a pattern, though. Yahuwah, when he when he uses a woman to kill, him, usually something happening to, to that head. head right? yeah. and the nail in the head, they get beheaded. <laughs> the head split with a pot. But he go right to the top. He go right to the head. So hallelujah. I hope you I hope you got something out of this this lesson. Um hallelujah everybody. It's time to wine and dine. Shalom. Shalom. Oh. Shalom. Don't let it be said I was killed by a woman. <laughs>